All right, so in this demonstration, um, we're just going to go through the basic mechanics of how to perform an exploratory factor analysis in SPSS, PASW. We'll be using the Sohana items data set that is different from the Sohana constructs data set. Uh, you can find this on Blackboard in the, in the course documents folder. This demonstration is going to be um, not elaborate, not detailed. It is basic. I'm not going to explain all the different options and all the output and what it all means. I'll be explaining a little bit of it, but for the most part we're going to save that for residency 6 when we fully explore this EFA. For now, we're just going to do a quick rundown. So if you see something and you say, hey James, what does that mean? First of all, stop talking to the computer screen because I can't hear you. Uh, second of all, just be patient. We will cover that next time. So here we go. Once you've got the Sohana items loaded, we can do an EFA. Also, don't, uh, don't forget you can pause or rewind at any time. So we go to Analyze, Dimension Reduction, and Factor. Today we're going to look at um, some of the personal characteristics. Down at the very bottom, you've got Feedback, Participation, and autonomy. We're going to pull in all of these. So I'm just going to click on F1 and then holding shift I'm going to click on A3 and that'll pull in all of them by clicking on this arrow. We don't need a selection variable. We're just going to go through these uh, buttons real quick. You click on descriptives it brings up this window. Typically we'll do a KMO to start with and hit continue. Extraction uh, it is defaulted to principal components analysis, which is useful in many circumstances. Today we will be doing princess, principal axis factoring. I'll tell you why later. Um, often people like to do a scree plot. Me, personally, I don't use it that often, but I'll do it anyway. Our extraction is going to be based on eigenvalues greater than 1. Um, next time we'll do a fixed or constrained amount of factors. On rotation, we will do a rotation, a Promax rotation for now, and hit continue. There's nothing in scores that we need, so just hit continue there. Under options, we would like to suppress small coefficients, um, and we will do a 0.2. Anything with an absolute absolute value um, less than 0.2, we'll, we won't, we don't want to look at that. If you say, James, none of this makes sense to me. For right now, don't worry about it. Uh, we can explain it more thoroughly next time. Hit OK. All right, it will run. I'm going to walk you through this briefly. This first frame, we have the KMO. Right now, just look at the significance, SIG. It is significant, which means this set of data, this set of observed variables is adequate and appropriate for using in an EFA. The communalities, they should all be above 0 0.2, 0 0.4 area. Um, these are, so they're good. It's another adequacy measure. This total variance explained table shows us that one, two, three factors have been extracted, and those three explain about 65.75% of the variance in the model, in the model containing these items, these observed items. We will use this uh, far right measure uh, instead of this measure over here. Here's the scree plot. You look at where the 1 is, and that's eigenvalues on the left. You look at where the 1 is and make an imaginary line all the way across, and you see that above it you have 3, 1, 2, 3 little dots. That means 3 factors were extracted based on eigenvalues above 1. Skip the factor matrix for now. And here is the piece we really want to look at, the pattern matrix. This is a very clean pattern matrix. We can see that um, on the left we have the observed items, and on the top we have the factors that summarize those items. Feedback seems to be loading cleanly on factor 1. Participation seems to be loading cleanly on factor 2. And autonomy loads cleanly on factor 3. We can see that feedback does not load on factor 2, which means that the feedback items relate more to each other, they correlate better with each other than they do with 
participation items or with autonomy items. We can also see that down here in the factor correlation matrix. We can see that factor one, which was made of, um, which was made of feedback, does not correlate too highly with factor two, which was made of participation. All right, so that was a very clean example. We obviously have three nice crisp factors as we would expect. We expect three to come out because we have three different conceptual ideas here, three different constructs, feedback, participation, and autonomy. Let's look at a less clean example. Let's go back to factor analysis. Get rid of all of these. I'm just gonna click anywhere, hit control A, left arrow, get them all out of there. We're gonna go look at quality and productivity. So I click on Q1, go scroll down, here's P7, that's the last productivity item. Gonna bring them all over. I'm gonna use the same uh, options that we set before, they haven't changed, and I'm gonna hit OK. All right, look at the KMO, it's good. You look at communalities, pretty good. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five factors have emerged or have been extracted, explaining about 64.5% of the variance in the model. That's good, anything over 60 is good, over 50 is tolerable. Here's the scree plot, kind of hard to read because it's, it's uh, so large, so I ignore it for now. Ignore the factor matrix, go down to the pattern matrix. All right, not as clean as the other uh, pattern matrix we were looking at. We see we have what's called a cross-loading here, where a single item loads on multiple factors. We also see that it is a problematic cross-loading, as cross-loadings are tolerable, they're acceptable, if the cross-loading has a difference of more than 0.2. Um, these two cross-loadings only have a difference of about point, what is that, point, uh, 0.16, so not enough of a difference there. And we see we have cross-loading here, cross-loading here. Uh, we have these weird ones that are above 1, and that's a measurement issue. We also have a cross-loading here, and ha getting these low loadings uh, is also not that great. So what's the problem? Our communalities look good, our KMO looked good, um, so it's adequate for an EFA, but it's just not coming out quite right. The first thing we want to do is figure out if we really wanted or expected five factors to emerge. Um, if we go to our data set, um, our survey instrument, here it is for Sohana, and we look at quality and productivity, we can see that for quality, they were actually measuring reliability, trust, promptness, and individualized attention. That's four different things. And for productivity, they were measuring output and backroom productivity. So that's two different things. So four plus two means we really should be expecting to see six factors emerge. So let's go back to SPSS, redo the factor analysis, but this time under extraction, we're going to extract based on a fixed number of factors, and that number is six. We expect to see six emerge. Hit continue. Hit OK. We're going to skip all this. We know it's pretty decent. Uh, we're going to go down to the pattern matrix. And what do you behold? Ha ha ha. Much cleaner. We see that. Uh, this cross-loading is within, uh, it is more than 0.2 difference. This one is more than 0.2 difference, more than 0.2 difference. Still kind of low here, and that is not more than 0.2 difference. So what we're going to do, and also these are still above 1, we're going to remove P5. P5 seems to be causing some issues. So you'll go back, do the EFA, go find P5 at the bottom. Here it is, just get rid of it, run it again, go to the pattern matrix, and we have tolerable, tolerable, tolerable. Ah, the, the issues of above one are gone, and this is good. We have six relatively clean factors. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, and you'll notice, if you recall from the um, measurement instrument, that these are what we expected, Q1 through five, measuring that one construct, I can't remember what it was, Q6 through eight, right here, stops Q9 through 13, measuring another one, and Q14 through 17, P1 through four, and P6 and seven. Now, this is not perfect. It is not perfectly clean. We still have low loadings. Point fours are kind of low. Um, but for now, this is good. We also see from this that we can learn how to name, or we can be informed as to how to name these constructs. So Q1 through 5. Let's go look at the measurement instrument. Q1 through 5, we're talking about reliability. So I would call factor 1 reliability. Let's see. Oh no, I guess factor one was actually Q14 through 17. So I would call that, here it is, 14 through 17, individualized attention. That's what we would name that factor. Factor two we would name, let's see, P1 through P4 is about output. I would name that one output. Factor three and so on. You see how you can name them. If they don't have these useful names already available, then you would just name them based on what the questions are. So you go look at the individual questions and see what they're really asking about. And then find some uh, theme or related concept and name them based on that. Well, for your exercise, um, you pretty much need to reproduce what I just did here with P's and Q's and email me the pattern matrix. For your homework, you're going to do another EFA, a little more elaborate, using the burnout items. And that's it. Thanks.